At a stage where the entire world as a whole, I would say, is looking into climate change, into growing society, into all of the new innovations in order to save the planet. We can say that the younger generation or the upcoming generation is more focused into topics as such uh, compared to the older generations. And today we are bringing someone to uh, speak with us about how someone in his uh, teenage life is a uh, working working hard with his project to bring something new into the world. He, uh, I could actually call him a young scientist because he is actually in the Young Scientist Challenge in the States. He is a Sri Lankan born, Minula Virisaka. Hello Minula, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, um, like I said, I think your generation, the Gen Zs, the millennials also, I would say, is so into, you know, bringing something new to society to ensure that, you know, the planet is uh, saved, if I could say that. So uh, rather than me talking about your project, I think it would be great to hear it from you itself. So tell us, how did this uh, come into play? How did this project work? How, where did the idea come from? Yeah, uh, so my project for the Young Scientist Challenge is developing an organic redox battery system. And what that means or let's say, how did I come up with the idea? Uh, first of all, I had to do a lot of research into some of the biggest problems that I saw. And one thing that kept coming up and something that I knew I wanted to focus on was climate change. Looking at the data, I noticed 25% of greenhouse gas emissions globally are created from energy production methods. 81.8% .8 of the global energy production comes from fossil fuels, also known as oil, coal and natural gas. So the problem with these fossil fuels is that they create greenhouse gas emissions when we burn them to create our energy. So to solve that solution, people and companies have spent millions of dollars investing into renewable energy production, which is our solar panels, our wind turbines and our hydroelectric dams. So the problem with these renewable energy systems is that they can't power uh, they can't power 24-7 as their source power, such as sunlight or wind, is not always available. So you consider this a global issue, is it? Yes, I do actually. Um, so, so to solve that problem, battery systems are currently used to store excess energy and allow them to be used at later periods of time. Mm -hmm. So the commonly, the chemistry used for grid scale applications um, are, is called lithium ion. And this is a very dangerous technology and a very dated form of technology to be used at such a scale like this. Since this is such a new and very experimental phase of battery storage, implementing a newer technology might actually allow uh, for our renewable energy systems to be cleaner, use less unethical labor, and to be much safer. So my proposal is to use organic compounds to store energy and create safer batteries. So uh, you spoke about the pros of this uh, project, Minola, but at the same time, I think everything has at least a little bit of cons to it. What are the consequences we could see from this particular project of yours? Or are there no consequences? So, of course, there's always consequences um, when it comes to anything. One thing with mine is that, like lithium-ion batteries, it creates CO2 emissions during the refining and manufacturing. But the huge benefit compared to lithium batteries is that there's a there's a much massive reduction at scales of magnitude that it's kind of hard to comprehend. The other thing is that my, the benefit of my technology is that it uses much more machinery rather than physical labor. So in that case, we can reduce the risk of using unethical labor, and to me, that's a huge benefit. Uh, well, uh, Minola, uh, when I actually took a look at the whole project and uh, the website of the competition, something I noticed was that there's a lot of uh, Asians who, are, <laughs> who have made it to the finalist stage. Uh, how does that work? Do you see a, co a lot of competition coming in from your same background? Or, you know, was it uh, cool to have people, you know, uh, I know that you're the only Sri Lankan and the first Sri Lankan, I believe, yep. but uh, there are Indians, there are uh, 
students from Japan, I believe. So how does it, uh, you know, how does it feel like to have, you know, so many Asians competing with you? So the thing with uh, STEM in the United States is that, of course, there's a lot of Asians that advance to the highest level. So typically at competitions like this, you'll see a lot of Indians, Japanese people or Chinese people. But the I think it's not, I don't see it as a bad thing. I don't really see people for their race or their background. I just see them for who they are and what they're contributing to our society. Mm -hmm. So I'm the first Sri Lankan descent, um, of first person of Sri Lankan descent to get to this level of the competition. There have been Sri Lankans who've got to state merit awards and stuff like that but the top 10 there's never been a sh person of Sri Lankan descent there so I'm very proud and I'm very excited to represent our country at that level of course and how are you seeing the competition do you think it's tough yeah I know of course these guys they've worked uh, just as hard as me on their projects and you know some of them are very beneficial I think all of these projects if they could get first place I would love that but this of course is a competition so I know there's still more work for me to put in because my eventual goal is to get to that first place and be titled America's Top Young Scientist. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, there's always more work to be done on this project to for the competition and for potentially to be used in our real society. Of course, and we really hope that you uh, one day end up being America's Top Young Scientist. Thank you. But uh, coming back uh, to the whole point where you are of Sri Lankan descent, Minola, um, I know you were born in Sri Lanka and then you were raised in the States while your parents migrated but uh, you know I'm sure you would have heard about what the education system in Sri Lanka is like. How would you compare the difference between the two educational systems in uh, Sri Lanka and the States and uh, what are the opportunities that you're getting there that you probably wouldn't have got here? Yeah so of course one of the biggest differences between the American education system and the Sri Lankan education uh, education system is definitely money mm -hmm. so of course the United States has higher tax rates and which is how we have such a developed and uh, stable infrastructure and opportunities like this for us as kids to showcase our abilities so I know that is one major difference that people in Sri Lanka usually don't get so and then another thing I noticed is that uh, Sri Lankan uh, people when I get to talk with them. They're talking a lot about O-levels and A-level exams. So I know there's a lot uh, of lectures and exams in the Sri, uh, Sri Lankan education system mm -hmm. that basically dictate your entire life. Okay. So something I noticed in the States is that of course we have lectures and standardized testing like that. But one thing I noticed is that we're much more free and we have the ability to choose our own education path. So for example, um, in sixth grade, I joined a specialized uh, accelerated and uh, advanced learning program called SUMA. Mm -hmm. So in that program, I met the science teacher. It's really how I got into science in the first science competitions in the first place. And usually, what uh, how science is taught there is that there'll be a basic lecture about what we're learning about, as well as um, what the topic is. So from there, that's really all we get. We really have to do our own research and to find out. Um, find about deeper, like go deeper into the topic. So, for example, science, let's take science fair for an example. Um, so, our science teacher gave us a little background about the steps to a successful science fair project, mm -hmm. as well as how to do research and all those steps. But she really gave it up to us mm -hmm. to choose what we wanted to do, as well as why we wanted to do it. And from there, she gave us a basic guideline and said, Here you go, go on your jolly <laughs> way. Okay. So, I know if um, just what I've heard from my parents and my friends who live in Sri Lanka. Something like that is really not common here and it's something I think would love to implement here as well. And then the other thing is if you don't enjoy what you're learning, I don't think you really want to keep learning on. So mm -hmm. I think what they have in the States is a probably a better implementation of a successful education system. Uh, you're an eighth grader, you are 14 and you're already competing in a national level uh, competition and you're a finalist there. But what would life look like for Minola in the next 10 years? Where do you think you want to be? Yeah, so of course I always had this interest in math and engineering, but really in the recent years is when I really developed my uh, love and appreciation of science. So. As I like my project is kind of a electronics and battery based, but I also have a really great appreciation for computers and technology in general. 
So mixing those up, I know I definitely want to go into college. I'm not entirely sure what I want to study yet, um, but I know I want to someday end up working as a computer or maybe electronics engineer, mm -hmm. working to solve some of the biggest problems in computing and I think some of the biggest problems in our globe. All right, and my final question to you, Minile, is there are a lot of uh, youngsters, um, teenagers, I would say, just like you, who uh, have uh, so much ideas in their minds. They're like, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that, and they have so much ideas coming in. But then there are certain uh, limitations that don't let them go out of the box and actually explore those opportunities. What would be Minula's advice to uh, you know youngsters like that? <laughs> That's a tough question. <laughs> uh, what I would say to do is uh, never give up. Of course, never let these aspirations go away. There's always some way to do what you love. And one of the most important parts, I think, is that if you're interested in science and technology and stuff like that, take it uh, personally and take um, make sure to, even if, like, let's say the education system doesn't want you to do it, do it yourself. There's many of self-entry international science competitions such as Google Science Fair and stuff like that. So if you really have a passion for science and engineering, you want to showcase your ideas, enter into those competitions, get the experience. I know it's awesome. It's awesome to be able to share my ideas and experiences with uh, the Sri Lankan people. But I think it's, uh, more, it's even more awesome if you guys go out and share your own ideas with our global community. It's everyone not, yeah, everyone wants to do what they love. But I think if you don't take initiative by yourself, you're never gonna be able to do those things. Of course, one of the young scientists in the States, and I think that is a very big achievement. Congratulations to you once again. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us on this exclusive. Thank you for joining us. We will be back again with yet another exclusive.